I'm back. Welcome back out to the Suits Crafting Woodshop. We are back in business. It has been a crazy few weeks. We've had all sorts of just busyness and illness and just all sorts of just crazy stuff going on these last few weeks. So you guys actually haven't heard from me probably in about a month. Um, it's been really busy at work. I mean, I've been telling you guys that for weeks. It's been busy at work. And then um, we actually, I had, my birthday was on the 11th. My son's birthday was on the 14th. And right before that, uh, both of my daughters came down with an illness. And then I came down with an illness. I won't go into details. If you're curious what it was, look up gastroenteritis. It is nasty. It was not any fun. Did not enjoy that at all. And uh, luckily it cleared up just kind of. Uh, right before uh, going out for my birthday breakfast, and then I had to work the evening of my birthday. But that's uh, that's a whole other matter. But it has been nuts. It's been busy. You guys have been putting in orders. I've been uh, getting those out as fast and quickly as I can. And so I just wanted to come out to you guys on Shop Talk Tuesday, although it's actually Wednesday now, and just give you an update on some of the things that we have going on out the shop because it's been so long, I figure... It doesn't matter if it's Tuesday, let's just get it out there because you guys have been waiting to see my smiling face. So one of the things I've been working on a lot lately, I've actually been talking with a guy on Instagram, uh, R. McCarthy Woodworks uh, on Instagram, Ryan McCarthy. Him and I are actually doing a collaboration. He sent me a whole box of wood. There is all sorts of just beautiful, wonderful woods in here. I am so excited to do some stuff up with these. There's, um, there's maple burls. There's Manzanita, which I'm really excited for. Um, he actually sent me his entire stockpile of Manzanita burls, and I'm really excited to get uh, casting up on some of these. It's got some resin on some of the faces, and uh, I'll, I'll clean that off in order to uh, cast up with it, but really excited to cast up some Manzanita. Um, we did that in trade. He actually had a block that I was interested in, and he's like, actually, I'd like for you to do that in a bottle stopper for me, and I was like, sure. He goes, what can we do in trade? I was like, I throw in another piece of manzanita. He goes, how about I throw in all of it? And I was like, no, 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 don't put yourself out, man. I don't. I want this to be a fair trade. And he goes, I don't have any use for it. So I've got a whole bunch of these just large pieces of manzanita. I mean, I say large. I mean, this one probably about half the size of my fist. Um, I mean, so they're not they're not huge, but there'll be enough to cast up some interesting stuff. Some awesome blanks. Look at the burl on that. Really, really neat. Um, there is. Um, Elm Burl, there's uh, Coliba Burl, there's um, Box Elder Burl, and Maple Burl, just all sorts of just beautiful woods inside of this thing. I'm really excited to get some of these going, get some pens and get some bottle stoppers cast up with them. Some really neat pieces like this one here. This is a, a piece of Buckeye Burl, gorgeous piece of Buckeye Burl right there. Really excited to get that piece done up. So, awesome pieces. Can't wait to get those started. But before I get these started, I actually needed to do my end of the trade. He sent me all this wood, and then he also sent me four blocks that he wanted me to turn up for some pieces for him, which I've been working on um, creating some really awesome pieces for him. So these two pieces are two of them that he had. Um, I stabilized up a piece of walnut, and I think he said this was from his own yard, and it had a really awesome section there we go, right in there, where uh, the wood actually dipped in really good right there, and then dipped in here, and then it ends with a natural edge. And so, awesome piece of walnut, and then we cast that up in orange and blue form, so it looks really neat. And then I threw on just a real quick CA finish on there just to liven it up, that way you guys can see what it looks like, because without that, it's kind of dull. Um, but once you put a finish on it, it really just brightens that up. And then he also sent me this piece of Buckeye Burl that he wanted me to cast up. And you can see that it's got this really neat natural edge on the front there. It's got this really organic shape to it that is really awesome. It's got some nice figuring. It's got some burling um, up towards the edges of this. So that's going to be an awesome pen blank for him. Did that one up in blue and white. And then we put pearl powder in all of them uh, in order to make sure that we didn't have any translucent pigments. And uh, we wanted it nice and opaque. That way no... No pen barrel bushings will show through. So those are looking really neat. Really happy with how those are turning out. And then we also have got some more other items that we've gotten here. Um, I'll throw a photo up here. It's in the pressure pot right now, so I can't really show you. Um, but I've got this block here is actually going to be using the blue that you see in the background. 
is uh, solar color dust, blue to colorless thermal powder. So at 86 degrees, that goes from blue to colorless. So it's kind of like a partially see-through white. It's not, you know, white, but it's not fully see-through. It's just kind of colorless. Like there's just no color present. Really neat. It's a sky blue and it goes colorless. Really excited to see how that turns out. And one of the other pieces that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing up this block right here. So this is a piece of burl. And this one is Flaming Box Elder Burl. Really fun stuff. And then it's got uh, a natural burling section there. So these are going to be like little mountain peaks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Ghost Chameleon Shift Powders that are going to go from blue, purple, red uh, onto the black surface. I'm going to dab the powder on, throw on some clear epoxy, and then cast that in clear. And these are going to be a two-inch wide bottle stopper blank for him. Really excited to do this one. Um, it's got me a little nervous because it's not something that I've done before. So before I do his, I took a piece of maple burl that I had myself and I stabilized all of these together, um, stabilized this one up, and then I'm going to do the exact same process to this one. And this one's really neat because it actually, if you look in there, it's got a deep cavity down inside. And I think that that's going to look really, really cool uh, for a bottle stopper having that, that cavity in there like that, and it's got all these little mountainous peaks. I think that's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see how this turns out. And uh, he's actually interested in it, and he keeps asking me if it's going to be available for sale afterward, and I haven't decided yet. You know, it's it's really cool. It's just a test piece. If it turns out, I may very well want it myself. I may sell it to him. We'll just have to see. Uh, but either way, if these turn out good, I'll probably start offering these in the shop for if you guys want to pick some up yourself. Uh, for doing your own bottle stopper blanks or like over at Ben's Works, you know, he does dragon eggs. You know, if you guys want to try those out, uh, I might very well start offering these because if these turn out, they're going to be really, really awesome. Well, I've had a lot of pen orders. I actually haven't been doing any videos on them. They've been pretty basic. I did a Coca Bolo Baron uh, pen, not with a G2 conversion, just a standard Baron rollerball. Uh, I did a Purple Heart and a Curly Maple editor pen and just standards on those two. And then uh, the, the one that was really awesome um, I'm shipping out today, and it is a blue primary color cosmic cloud pen blank. So it was really awesome. It turned out really, really neat. I'll show you some photos here. And uh, I didn't do any videos on this stuff. I was trying to get them out as fast as I could. It was in that period of time where I actually came down ill. The orders were coming up due, and I just needed to get them out. Just needed to boom, 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 get them out. Because um, I actually shut down my Etsy store for about a week, week and a half, uh, while we had all the illness going on. And so once it was like, okay, I'm able to get out to the shop. I've got very limited time. Just got to get these going. I wasn't worrying about videoing anything. I didn't want to worry about editing anything. And I just wanted to get them out. They were all pretty standard stuff you guys have seen before, um, just in different woods. And so I just got those out quick. I wish I'd done a video on the, the blue Cosmic Cloud Editor pen, uh, but I didn't. It was actually with a Frixion conversion. So I just have the photos of it afterward. And his order was actually late. Um, I originally uh, cast up this piece, and he wanted it to be a blue primary with just some red and violet swirls that just kind of show up a little bit. And I did this one, and the red and violet came out really, really opaque. And then the blue came out kind of translucent, so you can't really see too much blue in there. And he wanted it to be blue primary. And then I also added um, some flash dust into the blue um, because it was supposed to be the primary. And then all of this violet and red came out because when I was trying to mix very little amounts of the resin, um, I added too much of the powder pigment. So the powder pigment came out super saturated on the violet and the red. And then the blue, um, I didn't add as much per volume as I did the red and the violet. And so it didn't come out as saturated. So it's more see-through space-like. And then the violet and red are not as much. So um, if you like that blank, it's for an editor pen. And I believe... Yeah, it had the Frixion conversion on it, so I could do a Frixion, a G2, um, or any of those with it. So if you're interested in that blank, it's ready to go. All I have to do is finish polishing it. Um, it's already set up. So let me know in the comments section down below, or you can send me a conversation in Etsy. First come, first serve. Whoever says, hey, I'd like it, 
Um, I will make that up for you. I'll send you an invoice on Etsy. You pay it, and I'll ship it to you. So, uh, But it's really neat. Uh, it is cool to look at. It's just not what we were going for, so I recast it, and then I made that uh, blue galaxy pen. So the colors are really cool, just not what we were going for for that customer. So if you guys want it, let me know, and I'll probably throw it on a discounted rate just so that um, it sells. So my son actually turned 14 this year, and I was about 14 when my dad taught me how to make pens. And so um, we went out to breakfast for his birthday, and then when we came back, uh, he asked, he's like, are we going to do anything today, or are we just going out to breakfast? And it's like, oh, no, we've got other stuff planned for today. And he said, uh, okay, well, where are we going? I was like, well, I have some stuff I have to do out in the shop first, but uh, we'll, we'll, get some, we'll do some other stuff. And then uh, about an hour later, he's like, Dad, I thought we were going somewhere. I was like, we are. Come with me. And so we walked out to the shop, and he's like, no, I thought we were going somewhere. I was like, we are. I was 14 when I turned my first pen, and so I think it's your time to turn your first pen. And he actually got really emotional. He thought it was really neat. And, uh, and he came out here. I was like, you've got full range of all of the woods that I have out here, minus just a couple of pieces, like a piece of Amboina burl that I won't cut up. Um, and, uh, so I was like, yeah, full range, whatever you find out here, you can use as long as it's not set aside for an actual pen that I have going out. And so he took a look through and he actually came up with this pen blank and, uh, it's a cut off piece of a red pen. I'll see if I can find it. Um, that had a holographic glitter. It had angelite small glitter in it. And then uh, holographic glitter flakes and red with pearl, I believe. And then we attached that to a piece of maple burl, which is not showing up here because my light is overpowering it. There we go. A piece of maple burl that's in there. And uh, it's going to be really neat. We actually just took it over to the bandsaw. We cut a 45 in it. Um, I showed him how to set up the sander. He was a little nervous around the sander, wanted it to be very precise, so he had me run the sander. And then uh, I ground off the 45-degree angle on both of them. And then uh, he globbed on some glue, and then I pressed them together, and then he spritzed on activator. And uh, I ground it back up, made all the sides flat, and then he decided to do a click Sierra pen. So we're going to be doing a gold button click Sierra pen on this one. And so it's going to be really neat. It'll be his first pen. I'm going to throw on some pieces of pine block and stuff on here so that he can get a feel for the, how the tools feel, how they work, and, uh, and get some catches in pine. When you get a catch in pine, it just kind of gouges it really bad, but the pieces don't fly off. It doesn't explode. And, uh, and then he can learn from it. Without learning on here, he can learn on a piece of pine or something on there. And we'll do some big stuff, like maybe like a candle stand or something, and just learn how to cut curves and make flat sides and figure out how to uh, plane it down so that you have a uniform cylinder all the way down first, and then you can do your intricate work and get a feel for the tools before he gets onto something that's precise. Because although it's just making a pen and it seems like it's really simple, um, for those pen turners that are out there, there is a lot of technical stuff to it um, that you really have to be watching and paying attention. And any pen turner will tell you their first few pens, they had a lot of grenades. They had a lot of things blow up, a lot of things that went wrong. Um, you know, you, it takes years before you finally get to a 100% success rate. And uh, I actually had a really good 100% success rate, knock on wood. Um, for a long time, and then actually when I switched over to uh, the carbide tools from Easy Wood Tools, um, my success rate actually went back down to like uh, 50% with resin blanks. And the reason for that was because of the angles, they hadn't come out with the negative rakes yet. And so the angle was too sharp on the original Easy Wood Tools carbide bits. And so you could take out a gouge just super fast. And uh, it actually would get grabby and it'd pull the tool in and it would just explode. It would just grenade on you. And so uh, my success rate went down. I went and talked with a guy at an Easy Wood Tools booth um, when uh, Carl Jacobson actually was at the International uh, Wood Turners Convention in Portland a couple years back. And the guy recommended, he's like, hey, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but if you're doing resin, raise your tool rest up a little bit 
And then instead of bringing your tool in flat like everything recommends, put a little bit of a down angle on it with your tool rest raised up. And then if you get a catch, it'll kind of kick your tool down and out of the way. And then it'll act more like a negative rake scraper. And then a year later, they came out with the negative rake scraper bit. So it actually worked out great. I've got the negative rake scraper bits. I'm back to 100% success rate. So we're going to do that up. We're going to get him out here into the shop. He's really, really excited for it. He keeps asking me. He's like, as soon as I get some time. So probably tomorrow, um, I've got another day off. And him and I will probably come out and get this done. Because I'm mostly caught up out here. Um, I've got all of my orders completed. I just have some resin casting to get done. And once I go out, cast up the resin, I can come back out. And then he can turn it up. And it'll be great. So that's it for today. I just figured I'd give you guys an update on some of the things that we've had going on. And I appreciate your patience. I'm glad you guys stuck around. Thank you so much for joining me out in the shop today. This is Tactic Fanner out of the Suits Crafting Woodshop, signing out.